I'm going to ask you something completely different now. I've on a totally different tangent, but something that mm. interests me because um, it's it's about where we come from. Being Australian, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but just the practicalities of life. I now have dual citizenship with Ireland. Um, courtesy of my wonderful Irish grandfather who had the great good fortune to have been born there and emigrate to Australia in 1912. So uh, carrying two passports, which makes life in Europe much easier. But I identify very strongly as an Australian and take my role as an ambassador for the Australian arts in Europe, in the States. I, I take it very seriously. Um, and there's always that there's always that little thing at the back of the mind. Um, family and friends from childhood are a very long way away. And that, that is a little hole, it's a little ache that's in your heart all the time. And while we get very good at putting it to one side, um, it's, it's always there. And I'd just be really interested to hear, I mean, you guys have also made your lives here, um, but have still strong family attachments back home in Australia and how that affects you day to day does I, it affect you I think that, yeah very much it's been I think I think the most difficult thing about having a this career in London is having left my family at yeah. home my parents are still alive my mother and father who are amazing and I've got a sister and brother they're all in Sydney now yeah. Um, and we do go home often, and now I'm going home more to see my parents. Now that I've left the stage, mm. I have more time. I'm able to have the opportunity of seeing them more. But, you know, I, I, I put it down to being, you know, the sum of who I am. You mm. know, I left Australia at 16. You know, I've been in this country for longer than I have in Australia. When I'm here, I want to be at home. When I'm at home, I want to be at home. <laughs> oh, here. absolutely. Uh, you know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I think it's tricky. I think we're very fortunate in one way to have had such an um, extreme cultural difference yeah. in our lives. Because we can take, you know, when I'm at home, it's all about that rough and ready terrain and the red, you know, mm. soil and the heat um, and all of that, particularly coming from Queensland. Yeah. Um, so, look, London is such an incredible city for the arts. Mm. And that's just something that um, we can all love and embrace. Um, but yeah, of course, family, family. And as you get older, family, mm. family, family. You know, it's a worry. And um, because you want to you want to see more of them. And time goes faster as you get older. It does. As well. Yeah. You, want to see, you, want, you want to see more of them. Um, but my son um, has, has just received his Australian passport. Yeah. I only have well an Australian done. passport. I only, I'm married to an Englishman. Right. I don't have an English passport. Um, but yeah, look, I love both places. What can I say? Mm. For both, for different reasons. But when you get off, when you get out in Australia with the heat, it's just so wonderful mm. to feel that heat mm. on your body. Yeah, about, I feel like about, I, about, I've just um, reached that halfway point that milestone in, in January that just passed, I hit the, I've lived in London half my life and obviously Australia half my life. Um, and actually, again, going back to Leanne shows you what a, an impact she's had on me. I remember talking to her early on in my first season and asking her like, oh, will you ever go back? And she, she said, oh, I've, my life is here now and you know, my son and everything. Um, and I think it, it upset me at the point, because obviously I was 18 years old, I'd only been away for like a year and a bit at the school, <coughs> and it was a bit of a shock. I, I just assumed everybody would say, oh yeah, definitely, I'll definitely go. But of course I was at a, an age that I couldn't comprehend what that meant. Um, obviously now, you know, I'm married to an English ballerina and we have three children. They're all English, they've been born here, um, you know, they've all got English passports. Um, of course, I'd love them to experience Australia at some point and mm -hmm. whether that happens while they're young children, teenagers or when they're adults themselves, I don't know. We, you know, we don't know what life's going to, to throw at us. Um, but I, I do still struggle with that initial move over and what that impacted, you know, mm -hmm. on my family. My, my mum, bless her, it all happened so quickly. I was in Lausanne in Switzerland doing this competition to see if I could get something 
and the final was on a Sunday night and then literally Monday morning I flew to London and my mum went to Australia and that was it like so my mum bless her like she had to have medical treatment she had to have medication and things like this because the pressure the stress and um, I think that's a lot for a young 17 year old to process um, and as I've got older and now that I have my own children I'm acknowledging and recognizing what that actually took for my parents yeah, yeah. and what, yeah, what it's too. still the, the toll it's still taking on them now that I have my own children and you know my so my daughter is five and uh, she's been fortunate to go to Australia three or four times but my son is three uh, he's only been once and he was seven months old and uh, our youngest is eight months old and uh, because of this lockdown situation my parents can't come they were scheduled to come this summer for the first time in five years uh, so it's looking like by the time we do see them again um, you know my my youngest son will be almost two years old by the time they meet him for the first time and that's an yeah, awful situation yeah, I know that's a very first world problem to complain about but, no, but when no, you but when you were brought up in a very close tight family um, mm -hmm. I think that's a lot for you know myself to also process you 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 instantly think am i a selfish monster mm -hmm. here like what have i done to to my family but of course they wouldn't want it any other way because they're so excited for what i've yeah. gone and done and i've still got my mom in sydney she's 96 and i'm oh, the only family gosh. member left and we left in 1987 with the intention of spending two or three years in europe and we're still here mm -hmm. but i've I've been in a very fortunate situation for the last 20 odd years that I go back to Australia regularly to conduct. And then I had that period of time when I was running Opera Australia. And now I'm going to be the next chief conductor of the Sydney Symphony, which also yes, means- Yes, congratulations. Thank you. It's amazing. Very exciting. Yeah. Yeah. So that yeah, will mean, you know, more trips out there per year. And um, it's an orchestra I've been conducting since 95. So this feels like we've had an incredibly long engagement. Now we're finally getting married. <laughs> um, but well, it's, it's I th I'm a grandma now myself. My elder daughter has two little ones who are the same age, they're five and two. So. Um, I now look at them and know how I feel when I haven't seen them for a couple of weeks. And, um, and we're living in the age of FaceTime and Skype and all of that. And I think when we left Australia and we had our first child, we were living in Cologne and our child was born and the fax machines were invented around about that time. So, you know, you mm -hmm. gathered around the telephone on a Sunday mm -hmm. um, and counted the minutes because you were budgeting mm -hmm. how much you could afford to spend for a phone call. When I think what that yes. must have meant to my parents and to my husband's parents, mm -hmm. um, they did their, they made their sacrifices in making us feel mm -hmm. that we should do this. Um, mm. And yeah, yeah but I, I it's lovely to hear he, you he say, Steve, you feel, am I being guilty? Am I being a selfish monster here? Because mm. I, I fought with those feelings for 30 odd years. But um, as you also say, they wouldn't have wanted it any other way because right. we were able. Yeah, that really, re that really resonates with me yeah. as well. You know, to think of, I mean, when I, when my husband brings up the fact that, oh, Thomas may want to go to university in America, or he might want to go back to Australia yeah. or something, I'm just like, oh, absolutely no way, because you know why? <laughs> because I'm, it's not that I don't want him to have the experience, I totally want that, but I know that when, as soon as they go somewhere, your life starts opening up yeah. and he'll meet a girl, and, you know, yeah. something will happen, and life experiences take over. Um, and that's incredibly selfish, but it is, it's, it resonates with me mm. what you said, Steve, about now I realize profoundly mm. what my parents went through. Yeah. Really, they gave up a lot yeah. for my, my, you know, their children to be able to have, to fly, mm. to be able to fly in, in, in our careers. Um, I'm truly thankful to them. And also now, I'm getting the opportunity to go back to Australia yeah, as a coach. Exactly. So that's that's um, that's come round mm. a full circle now, which is fantastic. You know, I don't have to get off the plane with a pair of point shoes. <laughs> <laughs> just, Did you, you know, have to do exercises the... when you travelled out on the plane in the past? Oh gosh, yeah. everything. You know, and I always kept an old pair of point shoes in my 
true, you know, old school, old school, if the luggage gets lost, yeah. which I've had all those experiences with, you can get up and you can do a performance. Um, but now, you know, these are the plus sides um, <laughs> of being on the other side of the stage now, right. is, you know, with all the difficult nights of childcare and all of that sort of thing, is I always say to Steve, I don't have to get up and do Swan Lake yeah. tonight, even <laughs> if I'm tired. You know? Yeah. Um, but it's just, yeah, and it's just wonderful passing it all on to all these wonderful dancers today. It really is. If you could say something to the 12-year-old yourself now, what would that be? Leanne. I would say go for it. Work hard. If you're interested in ballet, make sure that you're with a suitable teacher. It doesn't have to be someone with huge qualifications, but just someone that's got a good eye um and keep your feet on the ground mm. what about you, you steve your feet on the ground um i would say just keep doing your own thing you know it's your mission it's your life um, i think it was easier for me age 12 to have that mentality because you know i was the only boy really in a lot of the circumstances you know mm -hmm. at high school i was really the only boy that danced um at my dance school i was usually the only boy maybe there was occasionally one or two other boys um but there was no social media there was no mm -hmm. there was no way to compare myself as leanne mentioned earlier there was no mm -hmm. comparisons mm -hmm. being made i just mm -hmm. did it i loved it i felt free and, you know, I'd come off stage from a competition and mum and dad would be like, oh, well done, that was wonderful. And I'd think, oh, thanks, I had a lot of fun doing that. And, yeah, you know, yeah. you'd get your report from the judge at the time or whatever and you'd take on the comments and, okay, go on to the next one. Um, whereas, obviously, now a 12-year-old, it's, you know, you literally can compare yourself to the other 7 billion people on the planet. Yeah, it's hard. Mm. I would say it's to, really uh, yeah... Do your I'll still thing. tell dancers today, make sure that you're competing against yourself. Mm. Although you're to help the competition to be with the best around you, your competition is within yourself. And, and, and that's, that's what it's all about. That's how you progress. And that's how you feel happy in yourself. And we need to be happy to be artists as well.